All right, so I'm back out on the range. I have to do some testing. There's two major things that need to be tested. One, when I shot my Colt uh, match video and I put this rifle up against it just to use it as a baseline, I noticed I was shooting about three MOA low, which is really unusual. And I checked everything. Nothing's moved. Everything's still in the same exact position. There's no loose screws. Nothing worked itself loose. Oh, and for a bunch of people that asked, this is actually a free-floated handguard. There's a tube underneath here, and then the tube stops right here so the handguard doesn't actually touch the barrel. Anyway, when I built this rifle, I zeroed it, and I hadn't touched the zero sense. I've shot several different types of ammunition, from Remington to Federal to Winchester, all Millsurp M193. Always shot the same exact zero. Well, I shot it against the Colt. Now, I am running a different ammo. I'm running Fiocchi. But I just find it really hard to believe that something that boasts the same exact velocity as the rest of it, same exact projectile, is now going to shoot about 3 MOA low. So I have to test that out. The next thing I had to test out is the shredder. One of these screws came loose. Now, I put paint on all my screws so I can tell when they get loose. Like, for example, on the muzzle brake here, see that it moved? Well, it moved in the tightening position, so I don't really care. But anyway, I noticed that a scope screw got loose, so I have to test this out and make sure it's still holding at zero. All right, so we're going to be checking the zero with the shredder and the black 13. I need to check it with the, sh the black 13 because last time I shot it, it was a bit low when I shot it against the Colt. Of course, though, it was also like negative 50,000 degrees Kelvin. So that might have affected my bullet drop. But we're just going to confirm the zero on that. Now, the shredder, we have to check the zero because I noticed that some screws on my scope mount had gotten loose. So it's very possible when I tighten it up, it screwed with the zero. Then after I make sure they're both zeroed, then we're going to throw the camera on the scope. Shoot the shredder at 300 yards, then we're gonna shoot the black 13 at 300 yards. So let's get to it. Those were all relatively clean shots. Probably not the best shots I've ever taken, but I felt pretty good at them. I put them on center of the face. All right, let's bring the elevation up just a touch. All right, so I need to go. Give that a try.
Could probably go a little bit higher on the elevation on the Black 13, but I don't like to do major adjustments at once. So I will be bringing that back out again and then shooting it and then seeing what I am for the zero because for you should never do major adjustments. Not when your gun is known to be accurate because I might just be having an off day. And because I already decided in my head that it's going to shoot low, I'm seeing it as low. So we're going to wait. Next time we come out to the range again, we'll go back on 100 and check the zero. But it did go up a little bit, but I don't think it's quite enough. But again, we're just going to leave that one be for now. So I shot three rounds with the Black 13. Then you notice I switch over to the shredder. And I'm like, oh, well, I can see my hits from here. I'm definitely low because I was aiming right here. So that's roughly... 3 inches low, so yeah, it's about 3 MOA off. I throw another correction on it, and then I shoot right here. I'm getting closer, but I'm still quite a bit off. But I don't like doing massive changes to my sighting at the range. Plus, I only got 90 rounds at Fiocchi ammo, and I'm almost through it. I would really hate to have a correction put on here for one type of ammo that just so happens to shoot low... Now when I switch to a different type of ammo, all of a sudden I'm not shooting low again. I will keep correcting until I get it on, and then I'm going to keep track of my corrections. And if I get different ammo, all of a sudden I'm shooting really high, I'm just going to back off all my corrections. So now let's shoot the shredder. Looks like that one went low right. Let's try it again. That one went high right. Well, that doesn't help very much. That one went low right too. Now my target's being blown all over the place. So I gotta wait for the wind to calm down for a second. Come on! There we go. Everything does appear to be going off to the right, so we're going to click it left just a little bit. How many MOA is that? One MOA. Oh. All right, now we're going to have to aim at a different number. We'll go for the number eight. I was right on the money.
I'd say it's zeroed with elevation. My left and right's kind of blah, but I'm not on it. That's off. It is in fact off. I shot these right here. Uh, it's a little bit more than two MOA off. So I throw on a one MOA correction and that brings me closer, but I don't want to screw with it anymore. What I want to do is go to the 300 yard line to confirm that I'm correcting in the right direction. Again, like I just said, I don't like throwing massive corrections on at once because next thing you know, all of a sudden you're chasing the zero. You're chasing the zero all over the place. Next, I'm also going to use this thing, which, yeah, this thing is a toy. This will not work as I had intended. I thought, you know, when I shoot scopes from now on, I could just use that and you guys could see what's going on. You can't get a clear enough view. It shifts. I'm also concerned about it giving me parallax error. So let's go to 300 and see what happens. I only got seven minutes and 10 seconds left of available memory card space. So we've got to be quick about this. We got two targets out there. We're going to say there's obvious, so we got to shoot them in the head. So I can't go all the way down to two power because uh, the camera blocks my scope, but this is what it would basically look like through an ACOG. Now let's crank up to 10. And this rifle will shoot about two MOA low at this range. I was just too low on memory card space, so I just switched cameras. That one's got more memory card space. Alright, so I shoot the shredder. Two major things. One, I'm still getting stuck casings. Now, it might be because I'm running maximum pressure, so I might be able to back the pressure down a little bit and fix that issue. Also, I noticed this barrel, or I know this barrel has a gas delayer, but I don't really understand how it functions. I know you put an Allen screw in there and you can delay the gas into the bolt, because my theory is, that these little 55 grain projectiles are so fast, they go past the gas block and the casing is still under pressure. So let's try stripping off the casing. And it doesn't, it gets stuck because the case is still fully expanded. So I need to either reduce the pressure a little bit, which is simple to do. I'm just gonna reduce my load a little bit. Now I'm not getting high pressure signs on the cartridge, which you think I would, but I'm not. And that's why I'm running that pressure. But we're gonna back the pressure down a little bit and see if that fix, fixes my case getting stuck issue. If that doesn't fix it, then we're going right back up to the pressure we are at. We're gonna start screwing with the gas block. 
and see if we can't start delaying it. Then I shot. Here's my group right here. It's about five inches from where it should be. So that's a little bit more than one MOA. I could throw a one MOA correction on it right now, but I just don't want to. I want to wait and take it out again and see if I'm still shooting one MOA over. And if so, then I'll throw a correction on it. All right, so now let's shoot the black 13. All right, let's switch to the Black 13, and we're gonna go where the rifle shines. Yeah, we're gonna make sure our shots hit, or at least attempt to, but we're gonna try to keep a high rate of fire, but still accurate. We got a dial on 3.1 MOA at this range. I got half MOA clicks, so. One, two, three. Headshots. So we're all center of mass. Let me put some up in the head. Right, let me go collect my target. We'll see how well I did. All right, so what do we get? Now, I did count all my hits, and there is 30 rounds, counting these right here. So we got three, six, seven, eight, plus these hits. So I didn't actually miss the paper on any of them. However, I did miss my target right here. But what's important is, yes, the Black 13 is still three on MOA off. Because I was aiming right here when I did the headshots. And if you come down, 3 MOA, that would be 9 inches. That would put the center of the head right here. So I would have got 1, 2, 3. 3 hits on the head. I can't remember how many I shot slow. I'll have to count it and then see. But then the rest of the shots, these right here, I was actually aiming at the 8. But if you come down to where that would have been, that would have been about the X. So yes, I definitely need to throw another 3 MOA roughly on the site but again we're going to take it out and make sure it's still shooting that same distance because i'm also a lot colder right now too when i zeroed this rifle it was like 85 degrees out but i just can't imagine that it makes that big of a difference because when i shot these targets it's about 30 35 degrees so we're looking at what uh 50 degree difference I mean, the shredder didn't drop three MOA from a 50 degree difference. So we're going to take it out again. Probably going to take it out this weekend. Check, see, okay, is in fact the shredder and the Black 13 still shooting off? And if so, we're going to throw corrections on it right away. So I still have to go one more MOA left. Yeah, one more MOA left on the shredder. And I still need to give roughly 3 MOA of elevation on the Black 13. 
But other than that, like, they shot pretty good. And I did shoot some decent groups. The first group is well under one MOA with the Black 13. Second group is about one and a quarter MOA. Not too bad. At range, I was wrapping them off fast, though. I wasn't actually trying to shoot tight groups. Just wanted to shoot really fast because I was kind of getting bored, too. So, I mean, this obviously is not representative of what the rifle can do. And even with the shredder, I shot these quite fast, as you'll see in the footage. They're still a hand size at 300 yards. Not bad at all. So, anyway, I... Sorry, this video is kind of boring, but, you know, I like putting shooting videos out there. Uh, if you like to help support the channel, I've got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links and doing the Amazon shopping you're going to do anyway. I'll have something for this camera right here. Again, this isn't going to work how I had intended. I had intended any time I'd be shooting scope that you guys would be able to see exactly what I see. But this thing is Fisher Price as shit. It just does not do the job I was hoping it would do. So unfortunately, yeah, I'll be able to get some cool shots from time to time to like let you see down the scope. But as far as like doing serious shooting with this thing on there, not going to happen. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Why do you got to be such a heartless little brat? If I am such a brat, then why don't you spank me right now, daddy? And show me what a bad girl I have been in. Teach me a lesson. Okay, I might have been overreacting a little bit, Lacey. I love you. I am never going to trade you in. I love you too. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get.